Rick and Morty is an adult animated comedy sci-fi that takes us on a wild journey through the multiverse. The story is about Rick, a mad brilliant scientist, and his grandson Morty going through different misadventures, exploring galaxies, parallel dimensions, and of course, the complexities of family life. This show has over a hundred million dollars in merchandise and a media franchise, and the word iconic does not do justice to this show. Primarily run by Rick Sanchez and Morty Smith as protagonists, multiple unique side characters also run this show. In this video, we will be getting into 20 mind-spinning Rick and Morty characters and their crazy backstories, at least of the ones that we know of. As far as speculations go, let us know what you think of any of these characters in the comments. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Rick, I don't like glowing rocks in the kitchen trash. Well, I don't like your unemployed jeans and my grandchildren, Jerry. Rick Sanchez. Let's start with one of the best we have in this show, Rick Sanchez. As we know, Rick Sanchez is the show's protagonist with his grandson, Morty. He is also known as Rick C-137, as this show explores multiple dimensions and life forms. This character is perhaps the sole reason for the success of this show. Rick is a genius scientist who relies on alcohol and sex. He's so reckless that he calls for trouble most of the time. What's worse, Rick's origins remain mysterious. No one knows what or who is responsible for Rick's mental health. Fans are, of course, open to speculation. Let us know what you think about Rick's history in the comments below. Anyway, some parts of Rick's past are revealed. He supposedly could rewire and fix a television by age 12. Knowing Rick, this does not sound surprising. He had a normal childhood and a keen interest in tinkering with things. As an adult, he meets Diane and ends up marrying. Soon they have Beth. Rick at this time is a struggling scientist trying to invent teleportation. One day, Rick is visited by an alternate self, Rick Prime, who offers him an opportunity to join forces for interdimensional travel. Though going to different realities sounds tempting, Rick chooses to stay with his family. Rick's rejection hurts Rick Prime, and he sends a bomb through a portal to kill Rick C-137. He sends the bomb, but instead of Rick, the bomb gets to Diane and Beth Sanchez, murdering them both. Rick finds this and grieves for so long that years pass by. He is hungry for revenge and invents a portal gun to search for the killer. He becomes increasingly reckless with time and decades pass in search of Rick Prime. He has now joined the rebellion alongside Birdperson and Squanchy, Rick's two friends. These three also make a band called The Flesh Curtains. We will get to them soon in this video. These three also fight and win against the Galactic Federation. Rick becomes increasingly aggressive, commits heinous acts, and becomes a weapons dealer. Rick becomes increasingly depressed after being unable to find his family's murderer. He finds alcohol to numb his pain and constant mental anguish. Soon, the other Ricks and him bond to stop the Rickest Rick, but this is also futile. He kills many alternative selves in his hunt before surrendering and finding the Citadel of Ricks. Rick oversees its construction, and eventually, his search leads him to Rick Prime's original dimension. Rick decides to take Rick Prime's position and become the father of Beth Smith. This is where we see the ongoing adventures with his new grandson, Morty, in the first season. The show starts here, where we enjoy Rick's current adventures with Morty, only to later realize his shift towards a much more antagonistic role. These adventures often lead to someone's death or conflict within the Smith family, but we somehow enjoy them. Let us know in the comments below what are the best features you think make this show. Ah, that's what I think of your crystals, Rick! Oh, Morty, you idiot! Does anybody else have any more Kalax? Morty Smith. Morty is one half of the iconic duo of Rick and Morty. As you all may agree, to make this show this legendary, there is the hand of Morty's character and presence responsible for this. Morty, or Mortimer Chauncey, Morty Smith Sr. of Prime Universe, was incorrectly identified as Morty C-137 until Season 5. Morty is a simple and below-average student at Harry Herbson High School, which he attends with his sister Summer. 
His grandfather Rick forces him to be part of various misadventures. Morty is submissive and incredibly anxious and wants to mean something more than what he is. He wants to be more than a mere sidekick for his grandfather and more than an unpopular teenager for his love interest Jessica. In case you're wondering who Jessica is, we'll get into her soon, near the end of this video. For context, she plays a pivotal role in Morty's misadventures since he wants to impress her. Morty becomes seemingly more confident and personal through the seasons, independent of Rick. Rick enters Morty's life at 14 years old after being absent for over 20 years from the Smith family. However, Rick C-137 enters the Prime Universe hoping to kill the original Rick, which we have already discussed a few minutes back. Few fans may doubt how Rick remembers holding a small Morty, but this may have been a smaller Beth or just an act by the makers. It was first supposed that these newborns were our Morty. However, the discovery that Rick just met Morty shortly after the series began contradicts this. It's possible that the infant Rick picked up was an alternate version of Morty, or that Rick stopped by this version of the Smith family to meet him before departing. Morty's pubescent curiosity and sexuality have resulted in a few apparent misdemeanors, such as having sexual relations with a breeding robot that birthed a morty gazerpazorb hybrid, or another occasion in the episode Rick Dependent Spray, where he delights himself with a horse reproduction system that caused unexpected Armageddon from his sperm, impregnating Summer's ovarian egg cell, potentially causing an incest baby. Morty is also exceedingly irresponsible during the series. He has various ideas and makes several choices without considering the probable ramifications, putting himself, Rick, his entire family, and everyone at Save risk. you! Or my name isn't Jerry Smith! Aha! Uh -huh. Yes! Jerry Smith! Yes. Yes. Jerry. Uh -huh. Jerry Smith. Now, let's explore the main side characters that are the backbone of Rick and Morty, the Smith family. Beth's husband and Morty's and Summer's father, Jerry Smith, is our first character. He may appear to be a loser and has his fair share of insecurities, but here's the thing. He has a big heart. He has always adored Beth. All he truly desires is a quiet, ordinary life. During the first season, he was overjoyed when he found himself in a virtual simulation where everyone admired him. Chris Parnell, who plays Jerry, nails the lovable loser persona. When it comes to taking a joke, Jerry is the expert. He's the brunt of Rick's jokes and Beth's criticism, yet you can't help but sympathize with him. He has this naive expression in his eyes and a chuckle-worthy disposition. Jerry is at his best when Rick drops him off at a space daycare, or when he and Beth generate these bizarre manifestations of themselves during couples therapy. Those moments define his character and make you admire his endearing ignorance. Watchy party. What? Nancy told us what a bitch you are. Guys, seriously. Scoot, Summer. Don't you need a new companion now that- Summer Smith. At first, Summer Smith, Morty's older sister and Rick's granddaughter, acts like a typical teenager with a weird boyfriend, Ethan, and with the sole aim of becoming famous in high school. However, with more seasons to the show, Summer becomes increasingly more thoughtful and courageous, taking after Rick and becoming a better version of herself. And believe me when I say that it's not simply her spot-on portrayal of a high school white girl that will keep you captivated. Summer is layered. She's witty and sensible in situations that even Rick struggles with, and she's simply a teenager yearning for acceptance in a family of, let's say, unusual people. But it's her maturation and handling of being an unplanned child in this increasingly chaotic family that shines. I'm not hot! And if your father and I achieved our dreams, there's a chance you weren't even born. That came out wrong, that came Beth out- Beth Smith. Finally, we have Beth Smith. She is Rick's daughter, Jerry's wife, and Morty and Summer's mother. Beth is a complicated character. Her family comes first, and she takes her job as a horse surgeon very seriously. However, she occasionally makes questionable life decisions. Sarah Chalk, who plays Beth, finds some relatability in the character. Beth's craving for approval and love is what draws her in. She's evolved a lot over the seasons, and watching her grow has been fun. Her uncertainty, her battle to be a decent mother and horse surgeon, and her desire to solve her difficulties using her father's ways make Beth one of the show's most important characters. There's a critical point in the story when she wonders if she's a sentient clone installed by her father in this universe, which marks her character development.
gosh, it feels claustrophobic. Reminds me of that time we all got stuck in the elevator. Mr. Poopy Butthole. Mr. Poopy Butthole is a planet-wide rock star from another reality. Seeking a taste of normalcy, he seeks refuge with the Smiths, eventually becoming a close friend of the family. His first appearance is in the episode Total Rickall, which has a remarkable scene in which extraterrestrial parasites penetrate human minds and put their authentic relationships to the test. This episode indicates that Beth has no unpleasant memories of Mr. Poopy Butthole. A startling surprise occurs in this unforgettable episode as Beth shoots Mr. Poopy Butthole, leaving fans perplexed. However, he makes a stunning recovery, demonstrating his tenacity and endearing himself to the audience. His tendency to break the fourth wall and his eccentric attitude make him a notable character in the show. Mr. Poopy Butthole has a distinct role, frequently addressing the audience and hinting at the following seasons. From the shooting incident to his teaching job and family life, his character growth across the seasons lends depth and unpredictability to the narrative. His presence epitomizes the show's preference for surprise and fun. Bird Person, also known as Phoenix Person, is a significant character who's been friends with Rick Sanchez for a long time and appears to have known Morty since he was a baby. Bird Person's relationship with Rick dates back a long time and dramatically impacts the show's dynamics. Bird Person's introduction in the episode, Rixy Business, depicts his search for a new spouse after breaking up his soul bond with his former spirit partner. He develops a love involvement with one of Summer's high school pals, Tammy, at the end of the episode, whom he later marries. The story twist happens when Tammy is revealed as a Galactic Federation operative. Bird Person meets a horrible end due to this revelation, as he is shot numerous times and revived as the cyborg Phoenix Person to serve the Federation. In Star Mort, Rick Turn of the Jerry, Phoenix Person, now under Federation control, faces Rick in a spectacular confrontation that nearly kills Rick. However, Space Beth steps in and shuts off Phoenix Person. The Smith family saves Phoenix Person after the Federation is destroyed and dwells in Rick's garage lab until his eventual restoration to his original form. This change reveals to Bird Person that he had a daughter with Tammy, prompting him to hunt for her. Bird Person's character plays an essential role in the show's plot and sheds a light on the deeper layers of Rick, Morty, and the others in their life. His wisdom and insight, such as the meaning of Rick's catchphrase, Wubba Lubba Dub Dub! <laughs> yeah! Add to the show's intricacy and emotional connection between the characters. Rick! Squanchy party, bro! Oh, Squanchy! Is there a good place for me to squanch around? Squanchy meet Squanchy, the show's unmistakable depiction of squanchiness. Squanchy, who hails from the planet Squanch, whence all things Squanchy originate, had an essential role in the wedding Squanchers. In a dramatic twist, he transformed into a giant wild beast, displaying his distinct brand of squanchiness and allowing Rick and his family to flee the world. Despite having no dialogue, Squanchy managed to squanch his way into the audience's hearts. Fans adore his squanchy antics, and he has a particular place in their squanch-obsessed hearts. It's more about context than literality, Rick would say. You just say what's on your mind, and people get it. Oh, great. Who invited Aberdolf Linkler? I thought Aberdolf Linsler. Aberdolf Linsler, as the name implies, is a weird mashup of two of history's most divisive characters, Abraham Lincoln and Adolf Hitler. Rick's objective was to create a morally neutral super leader, but the outcome was far from what he had hoped for. As he struggles with the concept of equality versus the idea of superior and inferior genes, Aberdolf Linsler's internal fight is amusing and thought-provoking. His ultimate sacrifice, motivated by a desire to redeem himself in Rick's eyes and obtain Calaxian crystals for Morty, lends a tragic heroism to his folly. The scene in which Rick casually snorts Kalax for a high, as Morty and the audience look on in disbelief, highlights the show's ability to merge humor, shock value, and social commentary fluidly. Welcome to your nightmare, bitch! Scary Terry Scary Terry is a funny parody of the iconic Freddy Krueger from the Nightmare on Elm Street films. 
Scary Terry is distinguished by his little swords in place of Freddy's infamous knife fingers and his obsessive usage of the word bitch to punctuate his utterances. The genius is in how his slogan becomes a source of amusement, mainly when employed during Scary Terry's most poignant moments. Consider him sharing something emotionally profound and concluding with a booming, Bitch! Scary Terry is a character with relatable insecurities and flaws hidden beneath the terror and humor. Despite his day job as a serial killer, he's a regular guy who has nightmares about being late for class or showing up without trousers. Characters like Scary Terry testify to the show's ability to take classic figures, spin them on their heads, and provide a humorous and unforgettable twist. How are you today? I'm Mr. Jellybean. Hi, Mr. Jellybean. King Jellybean. King Jellybean is a brief secondary antagonist in the episode Me Seeks and Destree. He's a pedophile who tries to assault Morty in a bar as they halt after killing the giant who disrupted the village's peace. Initially, King Jellybean tries to be friendly, but he soon pushes Morty to a stall to rape him. In a rush of adrenaline, Morty beats him and runs out. After reaching the village, they learn that King Jellybean is the emperor of this village and choose to portal back home. Rick kills him after deducing that King Jellybean is responsible for Morty's tears. After his death, a statue has been erected in the village. A servant finds a box soon after in his room, which an official opens. By their reaction, it looks like a box filled with sexually illicit pictures of young boys. The official tears and burns these pictures, saying the villagers gain more from the idea of their king than the jelly bean he was. Who are Jerry? Hey, get a load of this! Jerry's hanging out with Doofus Rick. <laughs> oh, this is perfect! Doofus Doof Rick. Let's talk about Doofus Rick, or as I like to call him, the different Rick. He's not your average Rick, and that's what makes him intriguing. While the other Ricks look at him as the odd one out, he's truly a cute and kind-hearted guy. Doofus Rick is the outlier in the multiverse of Ricks. He doesn't quite fit in with the other Ricks, and they enjoy making fun of him. They claim his living quarters are, well, rather gross. But here's the deal. Doofus Rick doesn't do the things they allege he does. Those Ricks are nothing more than bullies. Here's what distinguishes Doofus Rick. He's the only Rick who appears to care about people. He's friends with Jerry, which isn't something you see every day. While other Ricks may mock Jerry, Doofus Rick likes him. When he first appeared in Close Rick Counters of the Rick kind, he did an unexpected act. He started a conversation with Jerry and expressed genuine interest in his life. You can tell he's a good person. When Jerry revealed his collection of R2-D2 quarters, Doofus Rick didn't dismiss him. He was genuinely interested and offered his opinion. That's the kind of Rick we can all appreciate in a world full of, should we say, unkind Ricks. Let me know what you think of Doofus and his character in the comments below. Small. <laughs> what up, my Helsings? Who wants to hunt a vampire? <laughs> Tiny Rick. What could be better than Rick in all his infamous glory? Consider his thoughts and conscience trapped in the body of a smaller, younger Rick. This miniature version of our favorite scientist calls out for aid in songs and raps, creating a wildly amusing predicament that no one around him appears to understand. And that's precisely what makes it so funny. These calls for rescue aren't enigmatic at all. They're plain and simple. Tiny Rick left an indelible imprint with a catchy tune still stuck in my head. He also fulfilled the astounding accomplishment of becoming one of the most remarkable students in school almost overnight. It all makes sense and it's pretty exciting. Aside from his iconic tagline, what truly distinguishes Tiny Rick is his ability to make the entire school groove to the sounds of, let me out, this is not a dance. This musical plea for rescue sent to his grandchildren, Summer and Morty, finishes on a darkly funny note. I am dying in a vat in the garage. It's a one-of-a-kind blend of dark humor executed with comedic genius. There's also the funny get-your-shit-together moment between Summer and Morty. It's an excellent example of how Rick and Morty combines the ridiculous, hilarious, and surprising into a wonderfully unforgettable character. See how it works. You press this. I'm Mr. Meeseeks! Look at me! You make a request. Meeseeks. One of the most valuable inventions of Rick Sanchez would be Meeseeks. These are simple, friendly, and supportive creatures who exist to support and ensure you get through just one task, a task you wish to accomplish for yourself and need a personal motivator. Once their mission, your goal, is accomplished, they disappear. Meeseeks must complete the task you assign them as soon as possible as more extended existence brings pain. Rick gives Meeseeks to the Smith family, 
Jerry, Beth, and Summer all make wishes. It all appears simple enough, but when the Smith family requests assistance with chores such as correcting a golf game, being popular at school, or providing marital advice, Meeseeks quickly makes Summer popular at school and helps Beth with her marital advice. Still, when Jerry is unable to put two strokes inside the golf hole in a row, things take a chaotic turn as all Meeseeks turn violent. Despite their typically kind and helpful demeanor, Meeseeks have a catch. Existence is pain for them. They aren't here to discover meaning in life. They merely fulfill a single purpose and then vanish. Are you kidding me? Come on! Oh my god. Well, what's wrong? Your idiot dog! Oh, he, he didn't Snuffles, Snowball. Snuffles, the former dog of the Smith family, becomes self-aware and more intelligent because of Rick's invention after Jerry gets fed up with the uselessness of his dog. Snuffles instantly becomes a submissive dog, helping the Smith family in day-to-day -day activities, only to gain self-awareness by night and arm itself further with robotic enhancements. It's ridiculous and hysterically amusing when Snuffles develops consciousness, rebels against the ruling elite, and then dreams of declaring war and taking over the Earth. The best parts of the episode are when he covers Jerry's face in his pee in revenge and shows compassion for his human Morty, despite being a brutal colonist. Snuffles is defeated when Morty and Rick enter Snuffles' dream and make him aware of his mistakes, which is that he will pass on the same injustice that he has faced to other humans if he rules the whole world. Instead, he decides to relocate to a society where self-aware, intelligent canines are in charge and pet insurance is required. This episode makes a funny, hilarious, and ethical question to the show, bringing new flavor to Rick and Morty. Evil Morty According to many fans, Evil Morty is the best Rick and Morty episode. Evil Morty is one of the many versions of Morty from the multiverse who shows amorality, brutality, and a crazy amount of intelligence, bringing a new challenge to Rick. His appearance occurs in the first season, where Rick C-137 brings down Evil Rick, but Evil Rick is simply a puppet of Evil Morty. The Citadel of Ricks don't consider Morty a threat, they believe all Mortys are inherently dumb. This is taken advantage of when the Council of Ricks turn their head the other way when Evil Morty applies for presidency in the Citadel of Ricks. He gives an iconic speech about the class differences between Ricks and Morty under the guidance of his campaign manager, Morty, who is soon fired. Campaign manager Morty gets depressed and spends his time in a bar until investigator Rick informs him of Evil Morty's true nature and history of killing and torturing Mortys. Campaign manager Morty tries assassinating Evil Morty only for him to survive and win. Evil Morty becomes a dictator, killing every opposition of Rick or Morty instantly. Evil Morty's position as president of the Citadel certainly gives him many options, but it also confirms his reputation as one of Rick and Morty's most vicious characters. I'm in favor of it if the episodes produced by Rick and Morty hold this standard. Crombopulous Michael Crombopulous Michael has the shortest screen time of the entire show. This guy meets Rick in a garage to collect the antimatter gun in exchange for Flurbos, the currency of space. Morty learns that Crumbopulus is an assassin and decides to get him before anyone when Rick and Morty spend their afternoon at Blips and Chits. He leaves his card with Morty, through which he finds Crumbopulus Michael and kills him. Much to our dismay, this character barely stayed for half an episode, but his presence was impactful. Crumbopulous Michael was the only character who openly admitted to not having any code of ethics and loving the act of killing. What's even more interesting is that the makers made it a point to show that the fart character, who was to be his victim, is saved by Morty and brought to a portal where he realizes fart's true intentions of destruction. This character pretty much highlights that sometimes killing is a necessity. Concentrated dark matter a lot. You know, if you tell us... I'll be your girlfriend. Jessica. So much to say about Jessica. She's the popular girl in Morty's math class who fulfills Morty's desires. He wants to be with Jessica, which Rick helps with only to make it worse. For instance, when Morty asks for a love potion from Rick, he tries it on Jessica, but she has the flu, which makes the whole world crazy in love with Morty. And it gets worse when the next potion made by Rick also doesn't work, or the one after. 
This episode shows how desperate Morty is for Jessica's approval, but much to his dismay, she is usually in an on and off relationship with Brad. Despite having less screen time, Jessica is shown with much depth, though she can be explored much more. In one of the parties thrown by Tiny Rick and Morty, Jessica and Morty have a brief moment. Jessica asks about Tiny Rick's relationship with Morty, and being honest, Morty replies that Rick is his grandpa in a teenager's body. Instead of freaking out, her only response is, cool. Jessica remains surprisingly calm in most abnormal situations and adds a lighthearted flavor to this show. She talks to Morty warmly, despite the popularity disparity and class differences. She's considerate and genuinely lovely. Overall, this character brings balance to the show. It's coming right at you! Dear God, no. You can't be real. Explore Naruto Smith. Another one of Rick Sanchez's experiments gone south would be Naruto Smith. This giant baby is a biological offspring of Summer Smith and Morty Smith. I can hear the sound, ew, but trust me, the show does anything but disappoint. Naruto was nicknamed Giant Incest Baby by Rick before he got renamed Giant Incest Monster. Naruto came to life when Morty's genetically enhanced super sperm named Sticky entered Summer's enlarged ovum. This enlargement supposedly led to mutations creating Naruto, and he entered space soon after. Fans believe Naruto could breathe in space because of mutations, but this show sometimes beats logic. It was later revealed that Naruto was captured by the government and taken to a secret base on Mars to turn him into a human weapon. He became a science experiment and nothing more. Soon, Summer was abducted by agents to train Naruto, but instead, she bonded with her son and helped him escape. Soon after, Naruto saved Rick's life from the pre-owners of Gotron Ferret. By the way, guys, he's named after Naruto Uzumaki from the Naruto series by Summer much later, when she helps him escape from Mars. Did you reach my sanctum? <laughs> All right, this is going in circles. Seize it! Story Lord. Story Lord is one of the headaches Rick and Morty face quite a few times during this show. This recurring antagonist is a conductor of the story train and possesses story-based powers. This means he can traverse through dimensions, and this guy is brilliant. He is one of the only antagonists who knows about Rick's meta-knowledge to some extent. This guy is disciplined, smug, and focused, making him a formidable villain. He researches Rick Sanchez either by learning about him or through story-based simulations. Story Lord is a significant antagonist in this show, as he controls the narrative literally and figuratively, bringing a worthy challenge to our protagonists. Marvelous Verdict that's it, guys! This brings us to the end of the video where we explored 20 crazy characters from Rick and Morty that made this show both famous and legendary. Though Rick and Morty are the protagonists and the run and run the show, the Smith family characters like Bird Person, Scary Terry, Evil Morty, Tiny Rick, and so many others are why this show becomes even more iconic. The writing of this show is in another dimension, too, with exceptional care for familial bonds and those made with science. If you love this show and its characters, let us know! We would also love to see what you think about other characters from other shows you'd like a background check on. Until next time, folks! Signing off in Rick style! Wubba bubba dub dub! <laughs> yeah! And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe! Thanks, everyone!